information with others who aren't able to attend right now live. Um, so like I said, so these are our monthly meetings. So what we're gonna do is the first, uh, the bulk of the, the meeting tonight will be the presentation by um, Principal Prin and Assistant Principal Bowerman about the return to school. And then what we normally do is all the different um, board members, we kind of do around the room and they give you an update on the various areas of working on communications, fundraising events, et cetera. You're all encouraged to stay if, if you'd like to hear about that, want to find ways to maybe work with one of those people, get involved more, we'd love to have you. Um, you know, the, the PTA, we're, we're just, you know, families, parents uh, engaged with the school. Um, we'd love to have more volunteers or further engagement. You know, we're here for you and we're trying to support the school community. We have a decent amount of funds on hand. I'd say about $8,000 that we use to fund things like um, supplies for the media center, uh, grants to teachers, to help teachers buy supplies for the classroom, other activities. I know Teresa will mention this later, but we're excited for new ideas of events or activities we could do, especially as we're returning back to school to have, um, you know, uh, 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 to support the community back when we're able to do more in-person activities, et cetera. So we'd love to hear from you on that. We have um, a great membership chair, Natalie Hull Simpson, who is helping us with member hub and getting people engaged in the communication side. So I'm hoping like we did last time, if we can post information, feel free to sign up on member hub or through the PTA website, maryvalepta.org. And that's a great way to find out more about what's going on. Um, Thank you to Keith Vance, who is our webmaster uh, tech guru, who's gonna be facilitating the, the discussion. He's on in the background right now. So as uh, yeah. the principal and assistant principal are presenting, Keith will be there to facilitate questions that you submit. He can see those and share those. Matthew, say hi. Um, so with that, I, I think the last thing I would just mention is that we will be um, identifying our new leadership team for Thank next for school year, next starting school year. In April. in April, I'm getting a little I of a feedback loop down. now. I'll be done in just one second. That has to be turned down. They muted you, Stephen. I accidentally muted you, Stephen. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. It's okay. I can take a hint. I'm wrapping up. It's all right. Um. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here we'll pass it over to uh principal print and assistant principal bowman for the presentation and then please feel free to stick around for q a and to hear from the rest of the board about um great things the pta is doing so with that i will hand it over to our principal and to our uh moderator uh, keith Ants. thank you very much for coming you ready principal print can you hear us They're working on it. Okay. Okay. Um, Susie. Do they need a couple more minutes? We can run through our other business if you want to while we're waiting. So, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. All right. And Michelle Ann, can you see the presentation on the screen? Um, not yet. Okay. I think that's Hold on. I should There it's coming. There it is. There it's we go. Easy, it's on. Okay. And All you right. can go to present modes if you want. Go yep. view present. present mode. Do you know how to do that? Okay. Yep. All right. I'll go this for So, um, I want you to know we're risk takers and we're learning every time we do this, but it was important for Matthew and I to take this on because we're leading a whole staff in these efforts and we really were very um, thoughtful and wanting you parents tonight to see how the classrooms would operate while we're in person and virtual. So Matthew and I stayed today to present from the school building tonight so that you parents would have an opportunity to see what what it's gonna look like next week for in-person and for virtual learning. So what you're looking at is me in a classroom. Um, it's a first grade classroom and we have the technology set up. If you see around me um, here and here, we have the camera focused on me and the board, but you can see where the desks are. There's 12 desks socially distanced 
And this is where how the teacher would teach also. So if you can imagine having students here, I would be right here teaching. They're looking at the board just like you're looking at the board. But at the same time, you're if you would imagine you're the virtual students who are choosing to learn from home. So you're looking at the same screen. So this is a test run. We're being risk takers with, with our important stakeholders and thank you for your patience. The technology each day gets a little easier and a little better. We, we just um, got microphones delivered. So those are attached today. We're trying those tonight. So we're gonna go through um, our presentation. You will have time to answer questions. Um, we'll have time to answer some questions uh, and, and we're excited to share our plan with you. So, you know our school vision. Um, we wanna work together um, to prepare our students for successful 21st century learners in partnership with the community, fostering student social emotional well-being, academic success. And we really do this from using pod, building positive relationships based on trust using equitable practices and having high expectations. So what does that look like for our return to in-person? And what you see right now is our current numbers. I will tell you just even as a, a 10 minutes ago, um, they still you know, um, vary just by little bits. Right now we have um, remaining virtual 207 students. And these are pre-K to grade five. That's about 49% of our school population. We have about 310 students planning on returning to in-person learning, and that's about 51% of our, our student population. I looked at about how many are returning March 15th versus return, returning on April 6th. So about 145 students will be starting with us on Monday, March 15th. And then after spring break, when our fourth and fifth grade and pre-K students jump in, we'll have about 165 more students starting with us. What does it look like? We had a lot of questions about, is my child's teacher coming back? Or is my child's teacher gonna remain remote? And now um, we can give full information on that as our staffing is, is more set. So we're gonna go through each quickly. I know you're looking for your child's class and that's important information to have. So I'm not gonna read line by line, but if you look at our three-year-old Head Start program, the teacher will be in person along with the paraeducator, Ms. Hebron. That's our four-year-old Head Start program, Ms. Mashburn's AM and PM class, um, Ms. Morella and Ms. McDonough. All of those teachers will be in person um, in the classroom and also just like I'm doing now working virtually. Now they will each teacher will have a support person. Matthew and I are each our support person tonight and we navigate. So while I'm up here teaching Matthew is either working with students in front or he's also can be navigating looking at the computer um, and navigating and monitoring who's online. So each teacher in person does have an amount of support staff to also help maneuver these changes. You'll see at the bottom, Ms. Dunbar. Ms. Dunbar is one of our CAP teachers in the autism program. She is going to remain virtual only, which works out well because she has five students that have requested virtual only anyway. So those services for our CAP students, she will provide the services to them virtually, but the rest of the teachers are in person. So we're not wearing. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Okay. Um, classes for <laughs> the March 15th start date, we're going to go in order. I'm going to really just point out those teachers not coming back. So assume, unless I'm talking to you specifically, the teacher in charge, the homeroom teacher is coming back, will be in the classroom in person while also supporting the virtual um, learning. The only person not coming back at this time in kindergarten is Madam Nishi Pai. She is going to do telework. She will do her online learning from home, teaching from home. So to accommodate our students, support students, Madam Hoosley has worked with them all year long. She knows the students. She works in tandem with Madam Nishi Pai. 
and she has been assigned to be the in-school supervisor in the classroom. So she will be with Madame Hoosley, uh, Madame Hoosley will be in the class with the 12 st students while Madame Nishipai is at home teaching from the screen to both students. Madam Horkler is coming into the building. What I want to say here for this instance is that these two teachers, whether telework or in person, they will also have a support person to help monitor both classrooms. We put their classrooms next door and they have a shared door that goes between the two rooms. So it's easy for a staff member to get will stand at the door if, if added support is needed, can jump to either side. Okay. In first grade, um, you can see all of our first grade teachers are coming back with the exception of our two French immersion first grade teachers. Both Mr. C and Madam Loomis will be teleworking. And so again, in order to keep those positive relationships, um, built on trust, make sure that we're being consistent with our students. We want them to feel comfortable. We don't want an unknown person greeting them in a classroom. We want there to be consistency. So Madam Riley is gonna be in with Madam Loomis while we continue to look for French speakers to help. And in Mr. C, Madam Polster, who most of you know, Madam Polster will be in with Mr. C's in-school, in-person students. And then second grade, you can see teachers are in person. Next one. And in second and third, all of the classroom teachers are in person. Each one of those classroom teachers are also assigned a Mary Vale staff member um, to be in there as a support to play in tandem and help the teacher with whatever needs come up for students or for um, the staff needs. I will say that we have hired just recently, um, one of the county monitors have been assigned to us. He will begin with us Monday. He will help provide coverage um, for lunch recess, but he will be introduced to um, the children in a way that, that you know, they're, it's gonna be a known person. So we'll gradually, help this person transition into um, supporting in the classroom as well. If at any time um, we have um, families in here that would um, like this translated, we did have our um, Ms. Furman join tonight so she could translate. So if you could just um, take yourself off mute and ask for translation, we can translate any part of this presentation in Spanish. Ms. Furman joined tonight to do that. Continuing on, um, fourth grade um, and fifth grade are all also, those teachers will all be in person and will also have assigned in-school support to help. Ms. Furman, thanks for joining. Sure, I, I was having problems with the mic, but it seems that I, I'm we were too. Way. Yeah, Ms. Farmer, okay. I don't think it was you. I think it was at our end. Okay. Um, so as we developed our staffing plan for this in-person and continued virtual experience, we really did have the students in mind. We knew that this was going to be their first experience in a new building. Um, they are anxious to see it, but there's also some nerves and anxiety that might come with that. We know that this experience of in-person is still not gonna be the typical experience that students are accustomed to that first time in a school. And the day may seem long for students because the, we're, we're gonna keep them busy throughout the day without being home and having breaks look different. All day mask wearing is gonna be challenging for some of our students, but it is not gonna be punitive we're gonna teach every time we need to remind them and we're reminding staff as well. We're gonna do it as a learning experience and share the why, um, why we're wearing masks and that's to keep you and others safe. And we'll, we will be patient as we work with children to do that. We also know that children haven't seen each other for a while and our children miss each other. We know that they told us that in a survey and we will be working with them, teaching them other ways to say hello 
um, than that close proximity. So we'll have waves from far, high fives, we can elbow, we can kick a foot, um, but we will be learning those as we go. And then we're gonna continue um, the continuity of our instructional program. Our math is still gonna be Eureka math. Our reading is still gonna be benchmark advanced. We'll still continue with intervention groups. ESOL will continue, special ed will continue. All related services will still be in place, either virtually or in person. And then building on the established relationships with the in-person and virtual learning with known staff. We are very mindful of making sure that the children in the building are not seeing these faces for the first time. They are, need to see known faces to help them feel comfortable in the new setting. The in-school experience is also gonna provide some opportunity to be able to move throughout the school day. So while we're gonna limit transitions as much as we can, they will eat in the cafeteria certain times. They will be able to you know, walk to the bathroom. They will be able to be outside at recess. Um, and so, and they will at times transition with other staff to move the building. So now you know the staffing plan. You see the numbers on who's coming in and, and who's staying virtually at home and how we'll support that. You see what the technology looks like. What we're gonna do now is take a look at, all right, so what does the day look like for my child? The school schedule, which we've talked about briefly before, is gonna adjust by 25 minutes. So what that looks like, we are a tier two school in Montgomery County. So the, our tier school two start time is really a 925 to 350 day. And that is what we did last year prior to the pandemic. Um, and we're adjusting back to that. So although even Wednesdays are virtual, we are gonna stick to this new time schedule. So your child's current schedule is just pushed by 25 minutes. Our front doors um, are gonna open at 9.05. If children are coming back into the building, they will start arriving at 9.05. They will get escorted to the classrooms where they can have a grab and go breakfast in the classroom. And then the instructional block's gonna start at 9.25. If children, your child's learning virtually still at home, they will have the opportunity to log in a few minutes prior to that. Some teachers do it 15 minutes before, um, but the instructionals, they would start right at 925. Then you have that morning instructional block. Some, in some cases, it's a special. Some cases, it's math. It could be the homeroom class a meeting, or it could be the literacy block. But that schedule is, remains the same of what it was before in the morning. The lunch wellness break, instead of starting at 11.30, is gonna start at 11.55, because again, it's adjusted by 25 minutes. But the children at home will still have that 90 minutes. And then the children here in person will also have 90 minutes. They're gonna have 30 minutes for lunch, 30 minutes for recess, and then there'll be a 30 minute time in their homeroom, which Mr. Bowerman will talk about later. In some cases, the students will go to recess first, and then lunch and then homeroom. They could have that homeroom first and then lunch and recess. But each of their 30 minute block, making that 90 minute block is lunch, recess and homeroom time. The afternoon session of learning starts at 125 and will go to about 340, 350. And at that time, so the afternoon is gonna look much like it did before could be social studies, science, math, literacy, or student support. It could be intervention groups. And then at 3.40, um, virtual students will wrap up and our in-person students will pack up because our dismissal for in-person, whether they're a car rider, bus rider, or walker, is going to start at 3.50 p.m. Okay, next one. All right. School week for in-person. Monday, March 15th, we're gonna be all hands on deck. We'll be at the cars, we'll be at the buses, we'll be at the walker door. All staff will be there. 
waiting to escort children in with smiles and Maryvale staff shirts on. Um, if you are in cat kindergarten, first, second, or third grade, they start on Monday, March 15th. They will be in person or virtual Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesdays for everybody, whether you chose an in-person experience or you're remaining virtual, that Wednesdays are always virtual. That is a deep clean for the building and that will remain throughout the rest of the year. On Tuesday, April 6th, that's the Tuesday following spring break, we're gonna welcome back our pre-kindergarten, Head Start three-year, Head Start four-year, um, four-year-olds on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday with Wednesdays virtual and grades four and five come back on April 6th. And they will follow that same Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday virtual schedule, but they will be on A, B rotation weeks. So what that looks like is, is if your child is in fourth grade and they're assigned to group A, they will come to school Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday of one week. The very next week, that same group of students will remain virtual at home for the whole week while the group B students come to the building those four days. And then it will alternate through. So every other week, the children in fourth, students in fourth and fifth grade will come on those alternating weeks. If you're asking, okay, so which group is my child in and which week are they assigned? That's being worked out now and you will have that information by next week. All right, so now we're gonna talk about arrival, um, specifically what that looks like. And you wanna, Mr. Bowerman's gonna jump in, we're gonna switch off. Hi everybody. Okay, so I'd like you to kind of imagine looking at the front of the school, like you're standing in front of it, looking at the big, beautiful new Maryvale. Just so you get a visual, we put some pictures up here and I'm gonna take you through what you're looking at. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the front of the school. That's the main office entrance to the school. If you've done materials distribution, you've swung up through that loop and showed up right at the front to visit us before. You've also been possibly in the bus loop. We're gonna talk about both of those areas. Right now, I'm gonna look at the main front entrance, this left picture. Now in that area, that is morning entrance for our CAP students, grades two and grades five. So in the first iteration of return in March 15th, we have our CAP students, we have grade two coming in to the main entrance of the school. That area there is also car rider. That's the car rider pickup and that's the car rider drop off. That is the second entrance to the school. Again, if you're looking at the whole school from the front, the first entrance to the school coming down First Street is the bus entrance. The second one, like smack dab right in the middle of the school building, looking at the main entrance, that's car rider. Car rider comes in, comes around that loop, it goes past Sandberg and down and around the loop and back out the way you came in. Over here in the second image on the right hand side, that's what I call door 28 because there's a 28 above the door, but that is the entrance exit from the bus loop. The bus loop is right over here. You see this concrete area here? Right across from it is that bus loop to our school. Students get off the bus and then they would walk over to the front entrance if they're in second grade or fifth grade or in cap or they would come in door 28, the bus loop entrance. And students who are going in there are our pre-K and our Head Start students and kindergarten, grade one, and grade three. This is based on the overall flow of students, where they're closest in general to their classrooms. And again, when you come in, there's gonna be signs outside these areas. Our staff is outside, of course. And then inside, we have hallway helpers. And we have our teachers out positioned outside, welcoming them, guiding them along to their spaces.
All right, great. Thank you, Ms. Prenn. So the next entrance we're looking at is grade four. Again, that's in the April 6th version of return, fourth grade. If you notice in the first picture on the left, I'll point it out, check this out. There's door 28 right here. That's that bus loop entrance door. You might say, and Mr. B, what's this door right here? That's our linkages suite. That's closed to the public. No one's using that door, but I just wanted to indicate so you were aware of what it is. It's 28 over here, the bus loop entrance, followed by door 27, and then whoop, around the corner where that beautiful arrow is. That's where students will get off and go right around the side of the building, down this area, it's about 15 feet of sidewalk, and leads you right to door 26. There's a beautiful door 26. That's the entrance for fourth grade. There'll be an adult there monitoring. His name's Mr. Kwame. He is a French speaking uh, new building service member. He's excellent. He's gonna be working there later in April. He'll be there to greet students. They'll come inside. They'll go right up the steps to the fourth grade hall, which is right at the top of the stairs. Now, unfortunately, as much as we would love to see you all inside the building, parents at this time are not allowed inside the building. Um, if you have any questions about that, concerns about your, your children, here are our emails. You know you can call, you can reach us anytime. We're always available for you. Our staff's on hand to assist students. I mentioned that before. We're talking about hallway helpers. We're talking about bus support, car riders, road support. We have our whole staff who are working in various parts of the building to provide really smooth transitions, really easy, friendly faces to meet the kids, to greet them, and to guide them along in the morning and afternoon. Classroom, I know, here's one here you've been looking for. Teachers are hard at work right now, prepping the rooms, getting things ready, but I have a couple images here Ms. Prynne and I put together just to show you two views of a classroom. Now, of course, you can see me here. Ms. Prynne was talking about this before. There's a student there. I have my mask on, of course. We're socially distanced. I can still interact. I can still engage with the student working here on their Chromebook. I could give them a pencil if they really needed it. You know, those kinds of interactions can happen around that space. Here's a classroom here, forward facing desk. Currently, you have what's called a black light. That's our new um, kind black of like a Promethean board. That's our new screens are called black lights. If you hear that light. term. I'm sorry, box, box light. light. Box <laughs> light. Box light. Yeah. It's dark out. So I was thinking dark, black. You got it. You see where I'm going. Box light. These are our new box light screens. Nice little welcome sign there in grade two right now. And then here's another classroom, a little bit of a longer view, several desks. What you don't see right now, we're having the staff kind of finalize their setups in the classrooms. And so right around each desk will be a perimeter of tape. That sets out about a, a foot around the desk where students will have their area. There'll be a box there. That box they can put materials in, their lunches, various things like that, coats, et cetera. And then you can again see the box light up front here, a teacher desk, social distance space, boards up front, clock, et cetera, just to give you a view of, a of what the classrooms look like. Um, Ms. Shelley Ann wanted to, um, Madam Riley wanted to add about the document cameras that each classroom teaching station has as well. Ms. Shelley Ann, can you unmute and add? Sure, I, I, I did unmute. Um, so when Mr. Bowerman is standing where a teacher would be standing, right? So Mrs. Prynne, who's at the desk, is sharing her screen onto the smart board. So you're wondering how do the virtual students and the in-person students can see each other? Uh, the county has purchased a document camera for all of us to teach with. Well, in this day, in this stage of uh, virtual teaching, the document camera will be right next to the uh, desktop where Mrs. Prynne is and it will have a picture of the classroom. And so when Mrs. Prynne, Mr. Bowerman, the teacher is in the Zoom, then on top will be um, shared the ch children that are virtual. And then the children who are virtual will be able to see a picture of the classroom and the children that are in there to unify the two groups. So all of us as teachers have set up our document cameras to reflect the classroom as much as we can. Remember, we can't see everybody because there are some of them are on the edges, but that document camera can move very, very easily so that for you to know whether you are virtual 
or in person, you will have that classroom experience. The second thing, and I think Mr. and, and Mr. Browerman may be ready to say this, the, the county has also purchased these fabulous looking 1950s microphones. These microphones that we received today or yesterday, I don't remember, it's all running, but these, these, these microphones are phenomenal. The, the people, MCPS who purchased this made sure and tested them. There's Mr. Mr. Bowerman with it. A lower Mr. Bowerman, please, lower. Oh, lower. Lower, so I can see them. Perfect, there you go, fantastic, thank you. Those microphones, and we've tested them out. We've been going from classroom to classroom. They we're using them tonight. We're we're, using that's them what tonight. we're using tonight, yeah. So, so they pick up, we've had staff meetings with about 12 people in the room and we've had, so that both the people in the virtual world, if you're Zooming in a staff meeting from your, your office, your, your classroom or your, wherever you are, can hear the people in the classroom or in the staff meeting who are virtual there, as well as any questions that you may have from the virtual students. So a lot has been done in order to unite the virtual ver and the in-person in order to create that feeling of a classroom. So I just, I don't know if, uh, there you go. Thank, Thank you. you, Michelle. Uh, Lynn. Sorry for interrupting, yeah. but I, I just want to let oh, you know that yeah. the teachers are yeah. hard at work with Mr. Bowerman and Mrs. Prynne as support to create that wonderful feeling. And throughout this week, I know our children have been on the asynchronous, but throughout that week, we've been practicing to make sure that we have a smooth transition for this virtual and in-person instruction. And honestly, you're experiencing, parents are experiencing what it's gonna sound like because Michelle Ann, you're, you're from home doing this and we're in the school doing it. And it is just like we're in the same room, the, the voice is loud and clear. So um, it will work the same if you put, you know, your children there at home and the students here in class, the sound that you're hearing tonight is going to be the same. Okay. So each student will have their own desk. I mentioned that in the assigned space. Each student will have the box to hold their belongings. Um, they could also hang their jacket, book bag on the back of their chair if they'd like to, or they could choose to put their things in the box. It's there with them. Headphones are provided to students, and there's no sharing of materials. In terms of material contact transmission and those types of things, we're trying to keep surfaces as clean and clear as possible. So we're not gonna be sharing materials. Um, it'd be helpful um, to send, please, pencils, crayons, safety, scissors, and a water bottle with your, with your child. Um, if you need materials and they're unable to come with those, we'll help you out when we're here. And to that point about water bottles, we are certainly advocating for students to bring their water bottle, to have that as their personal water bottle. And we have water filling stations at our water fountains to fill up those bottles during the day as well. Um, so in terms of breakfast, in terms of how the students eat what they eat during the day, so there is a breakfast that's provided. The cafeteria will be bringing those breakfasts to the classrooms. That's a pre-packaged breakfast, different one each day. Um, and that's at no cost to families. And then breakfast is eaten in the classroom and there's no food alternatives besides the ones provided um, being given. What's being given by the cafeteria staff is what that student has as their option for the day. It might be um, cinnamon toast sticks or um, a tasty cinnamon muffin or pancakes for that day. And that would be the option. Um, the menus, I'm gonna need to most, I'm gonna need to stop to share and then pull the tab up on that. The, Michelle Ann, you're on mute. Do you want me to click on Why that again? You, uh, it would be easier there. If you could do me a favor. Yeah. Um, let's go to stop. Or I'm gonna jump to the I'm gonna jump to the computer yeah. for a moment. Do you want me to click on that? Click on this. Yeah, you can open your you should yeah. be able to open the link from there. I yeah, think I, it's I master can. link. It's yeah, there we go. Back. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody see this visual okay there? The thumbs up. Susie, please share your screen again. Go to the green. Okay. Go to okay. the green and share your screen. That would be good, I think. Any chance someone could put that link in the chat as well so we could click on it? I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Hold on.
Yeah. You're okay. Get your share screen there. Yeah. Well, I, I can't get the yeah. Zoom back. So, okay, I'll I'll find it on the MCPS website and put it in the chat. I, okay. Um, I don't have the presentation though anymore. Matthew, do you have it? Let's see. Um, I'm going to click off of that. And I'm going to click on this. You know what you could do? We can, um, if you'd like, you could just highlight it and drop it into the chat. That way parents can directly yeah. access that. That might be okay. the easiest thing. Oh, for my word. It's fine. You just jump to the next slide. It's fine. Yeah. It, it's not letting me copy it. It's not letting I'll, me copy it. It's just moving. See, I will find it and put it in the chat. Yeah, Michelle Ann, if you just go to the MCPS website and type in the school menus, it comes right up. It's on our website. Yes, ma'am. And so Susie, if you menu. would, and, and sorry, Susie, one last thing for you to do. Can you please share your screen again? Yeah. And go to the green. Yeah, just one second. I need to, I need to get you back. Just one sec, I'm gonna get you back. So what you saw while we're talking about it, so, because we can manipulate the screen from the computer, or I can manipulate in the box light screen, I can touch things and move them. When I open something and move something else, and so then moving it back and forth, it's very touch sensitive. So we kind of have to kind of back and forth collaborate, at least right now while we're working together around it. Some of our links that are embedded in our presentation are not as easy to pull out and drop. So that's why um, Ms. Prim was gonna have Madam Riley go in and provide that for you. It's also on the website. Susie, what we're talking about is, is the menu, is the food menu. So you get a chance to see starting, like for example, this week, eighth, ninth, 10th, what those foods are. Being so provided. examples, one day is bagels, one day is pancakes, one day is um, cinnamon roll. So it changes every day, but it's prepackaged and it comes with a milk and, and or a juice and then a food item. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of the instructional blocks, um, for the morning instructional blocks, let me lay out for you what you're, you're already familiar with this some from our previous conversation, but just for everybody who's here tonight. Um, and, and I wanted to say for Ms. Prim and myself, we're really grateful for having you all here. It's, it's really nice to have so many people, so many of the family members here. Um, so, and we're, <laughs> we're all so excited right now, being here during the day as a family, waiting to welcome all the kids back, um, waiting to draw them in virtually to this experience and having the kids here in the building. We're just, we're just really excited to, to have March 15th show up here. So we're looking forward to it. Um, so the support model, teachers are primarily using the virtual platform to deliver instruction to all students. I know you're familiar with that. Teacher and Maryville staff are working directly with these students to ensure they have the tools to be successful. Through that virtual platform, but also right here, also right here in the in-person opportunity that's being provided. Um, technology, students are using their Chromebooks every day um, and those Chromebooks need to go back and forth along with the chargers to and from school. The county's still working out that case piece, having a carrying case, we've talked about that before. We don't have any information or those materials yet, but it has been talked about in terms of providing that. So we're hoping that that might come along and we'll let you know when it does. Um, teachers are using that box light uh, screen to support daily instruction. These are brand new. So we've been learning the technology for those as well. Headphones, again, are provided. A lot of really exciting things happening here at the New Maryville Hall. Specials, music, art, PE will take place in the music room, the gym, respectively, virtually. And uh, support services, in most cases, students re receiving supports, ESOL, special education, speech, will continue to receive those virtually from their service providers. So one other thing I, I just did wanna say is um, in our staff meetings, we've been practicing with the box light technology and also with, with how the speaker and the document camera and the desktop work so that we can you know, teach virtually while in person. While students are in person, it's not gonna be absolutely necessary that they use their Chromebooks all day. So for instance, if a student were attending, as you're attending tonight and sitting where Mr. Bowerman is sitting, they're looking directly at the box like screen, which would be reflected on a Chromebook. So the Chromebook is not needed. It will be there for, as an option, but it's not necessity. Um, in some parts of their day, it will be needed and used, but it won't be um, 
relied on as heavily as, as the at-home experience. And so lunch. If you've noticed here, another visual for you to see, this is our cafeteria currently in a version that we're working on. So I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about this picture and share some information here about lunch processes with you. So students are eating in the all-purpose room, the cafeteria twice a week and eat in the classroom twice a week. There is lunch um, support staff in the cafeteria working with them. And when they're in the classroom, there's support staff there with them as well. Wednesdays are always virtual. Just keep that in mind. Students can remove their masks when they're eating or drinking and chat with friends who are six feet away. If you notice, every square that's on the floor and in here and everywhere else in the building, they're 12 inches, they're foot long squares. So I've already positioned these are roughly about seven, almost seven feet apart from each other currently. Every desk is socially distanced throughout the space. Um, this side, if you can kind of see it a little bit, this left side, I'm calling it kitchen side, is for our kindergarten and our first grade students. This side over here, you notice the stage, I have some desks up there that's like premium orchestra seating, if you know what I mean. This is like this side of the stage, the right side, the stage side is for grades two through five. If you can see in the image here, at the front of the cafeteria, there's a door there. There's another one right across from it. That left side is to go outside the recess and they come back in on this right side. And then there's gonna be an aisle kind of down the center here for some egress and entrance movement. And there's plenty of space around the overall area for staff to move through, assisting with students. Building services will be coming back and forth with rolling trash cans to collect trash because students won't be up moving around. We have a bathroom system we're gonna be using to send out a male or female student to the bathroom, which is directly across the hall from the cafeteria during lunchtime. Um, Pre-packaged lunches are given to the students. So when the students come in, cafeteria staff will either place the meal on the desk or at one of two tables, one here or one up at the front of the cafeteria. Some students have lunch um, before recess, some have recess before lunch, and some might have their homeroom block before one of those. So it just depends. So they might come in from either side and then we get that lunch. Based on the positioning here, it's also an allergen-free environment based on that six feet of distance. The students are already cleared away from each other. Um, for students bringing their lunches, they would take that lunch outside the recess with them if they had recess first and we'd set them off to the side. There's plenty of space for that. But we are asking you to use consideration about disposable materials, um, you know, paper bags, foil, et cetera. It just helps overall cleaning, um, you know, be a much simpler process. Students don't have to carry a lot of extra things around with them or be concerned with the loss of those things um, or, or just having to have a lot of contact with other items. Um, that'll minimize the travel. I know you've been waiting for this. Some of you had the opportunity to come over and visit, come and play in the back area. Very exciting place to be right now. So right here are the recess zones. Now, in the cafeteria, we have a giant back window where all the students are facing, so they have that nice view of recess. The first spots that they're seeing out that big window are right here, and right next to it or adjacent is um, this area here. So our red playground, if you notice, it has a nice area, paved area with games and things on it. This is pre-K head start, cat are here playing. Next to them is the kindergarten playground, um, our uh, orange one, also a smaller playground. And then slightly up the hill behind these two areas, you can kind of see it right about here in this image. That's our upper grade playground. You move up the field and you see this, there's a walkway right there. It's all gated, three sides gated. They go through, they go up this area here, up the hill. And then we have the bigger playground here, grades one through five. And then right next to it, on the other side of this playground, you have the basketball courts. Now, children aren't allowed to play with basketballs, hula hoops, soccer balls. There's no exchange of items, and we're not using any of those items right now. But they could be playing up here, running around, getting that energy out, having a good time, dance parties, et cetera. You get the idea. So recess when weather permits, we'll be outside as much as we can. Outside, outside, outside. And when the weather doesn't permit, when you have inclement weather, we'll be in the classroom as we have previously. 
Staff will be there with students for games and having a good time in the room, socially distanced, of course, managing it as best we can. They'll be at their areas in the classroom and we'll work through a recess inside like that. And we know they'll happen because we know it rains some in April and May, but as much as possible, recess outside. Masks are worn all the time, except for eating and drinking. Masks are worn, they're worn outside. Now I'd like to just point out to you families, um, the masks that we're really looking at for children, if you notice that ear loop, okay? When I put my mask on, check that out, right? So MCPS guidance right now is really requesting and asking families to make sure that they're wearing a mask with ear loops. Now, the reason they don't want to see the gaiters that come all the way down around the face and neck or ones that have straps on top of the head or double straps on the back is because climbing around, playing, moving around and things like that, they could be caught and like, you know, end up being caught around the face, pulling on the neck or things like that. So they're really asking for ma masks with the ear loops, simple ear loop masks. Now here at our school, we've also, I'm gonna take a walk, I'll be right back with you, have also provided our staff with lots of extra masks for children. We have sanitation stations in every room. I'm going to talk about that, but we have masks for all our kids. If it gets dirty, ripped, it happens, right? We've got their kids taken care of. Keep that in mind. Students can co-occupy the playgrounds. They can play. We're going to try to visually let them know, hey, let's try to keep some distance. Keep that in mind. We're working the social distancing. That is a determining factor outside, but they can play together. They need to be together. They need to be around each other and playing, and they can use those structures. Those structures are clean daily. That with a very specific cleaning procedures that we're using, but the kids can play on the playgrounds. Um, homeroom time, that's that other piece that we've talked about during that 90 minute support block, you've got your lunch or recess and your homeroom time. Now you might be thinking, okay, homeroom time, got it, what's it being used for? Well, here you go. So kids can be a part of mindfulness activities. It might be a guided meditation. It might be a restorative circle. It could be learning games. It could be yoga. It could be read alouds and chapter books, like a drop everything and read kind of moment. It could be checking in about building concerns, talking about procedures. The kids could be talking about fire drills. They could be talking about the processes used for safety drills. It could be for silent reading, unfinished work, arts and crafts, team building, conversations with peers, virtual field trips and media center challenges. We have all kinds of things we're trying to put together to make that experience really robust, enjoyable, creative, and just something different in terms of the experience we're providing. Dismissal. So students learning virtually will complete the afternoon around 3.40. That's in order for the in-person students to pack up for the dismissal happening here. A lot of operations, as you know, in play, and so we really need time to make those things work as safely and efficiently as possible. So student in person dismissal from the classroom will be from one of three locations. And let me be the first to say, there's some moments sometimes where we're gonna need some grace, we're gonna need some space as we work through some of these things. All of our procedures are in place right now to be efficient and safe. We might tweak some things as we go over the next month or so, and just to make sure that they are as clear as possible in terms of our processes. We'll communicate all that information to our families. Bus riders, car riders, and walkers. We have all three here at Maryvale, as you know. We're back this year, not at North Lake anymore. So our bus riders will report to the gym. We have staff there who will line them up by their bus rider animals. We're bringing the animals back and they'll be dismissed from the bus route, um, bus um, area in the gym, right down the hall to that bus loop. They will come out that bus loop door. Remember that one I told you about before, door 28, that bus loop entrance exit, they'll come right out there and right onto the buses. Car riders, they'll report to the main lobby. Now that lobby, it's a fairly large area, but then it stretches all the way down that main hallway. We'll be using right now all that space. That's one of those ones I talked about that we'll be thinking about to make sure we can really get all the students in there socially distanced and have them available to get outside quickly and efficiently. I'll be outside, you'll be seeing this space for car rider. So I look forward to seeing all of you. We'll be giving you a number. So Mr. Hendrickson might get number six. 
I'll be noting him down on my sheet. And that number, I'm asking all families when you are car riders to keep that number in your car on that passenger side in the window. So when I see you every day and I look forward to seeing you, every day I can call it in. We can get your children right outside to you quickly and safely. Walkers, they're kind of our last dismissed. They're brought down by the teachers to the front area. And we're going with the old Maryville tradition that we used before North Lake, where families were walking up from the community from either side of First Street. On either side are coming in, they're going to meet with teachers and we can kind of pass their students off to them, or the students who are older can make their way on home and we can see them off safely. Matthew, can I add something? Oh, okay. Please add away. Okay, so, so, and this is always our plug every single year, but we haven't been in school for a whole year. And so when you think about our little second graders this year, they were first graders last year. So if your child is a bus rider, we ask of you as parents to make sure that somewhere in their inner backpack or that they know what is their bus stop when they get off the bus. If that's just because this is going to be a brand new experience for some of our little ones. And so if they know that bus stop, what the intersection is or the school is, it just makes it easier for the bus driver. Second of all, for the bus riders, especially for those who have younger siblings, it's just a thought. And I hope Mr. Bowerman and Mrs. Prynne will be in, a, in agreement. If there's an older sibling, because this is going to be brand new for us and we're going to have to walk them out with social distancing and all of that, if the older sibling could just verify that the younger sibling's on the bus, if that sibling is on there too. We've had instances over the years that sometimes the younger sibling is not on the bus and nothing's really bad has happened, but I just want to say those are just two little things for the bus driver and for the, the bus riders just to, to, for you as a parent to know. The older sibling could say, hey, my little brother's not here yet, or my little sister is not here. It's just a, it's just a nice little thing for, for us, because as you know, there will only be 22 children in each bus, right? So just, these, are, you, just, these are just little things that I, I'm, I have a captive audience here, and so I would appreciate that. Thank you. They're little things that matter a lot. Very <laughs> important things to our families, the state, safety of your kids, and us making sure that the communication is very clear all the way around. So the more we talk about it, the more we bring awareness to it. Um, I mentioned this before, but remain in your, um, you know, you're gonna be driving to the front. You know, our car riders, please remain in your cars. Carl Sandberg, our co-located um, friendly neighbors, they also have a car rider area there. So you're gonna need to make sure you remain in your car. That's what that number is for, okay? We're taking care of everything for you. Um, numbers are given out and then you're gonna have those. I'll see you first day with those. Walkers again are dismissed from that entrance and heading on their way out. Okay, that's me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm turning it back over, Miss Brent. Yeah. Here she is. Okay. At our last meeting, we did talk a lot about safety. So um, we're going to spend a little less time on that tonight, but I wanted to show you some of the things in place. Throughout the building, we have floor decals just actually on the floor. We'll be helping children count to six. Remember, you need to say six tiles away from it, you know, in the hallways and, and anywhere we move. Um, but there's signs and there's floor decals throughout the building. Each classroom was, ha, is stocked with, uh, Ms. Brownman was showing you a little bit. You can see one station here. Every single classroom or area in the building, cafeteria, hallways, um, classroom stops, there are sanitized stations, meaning there's extra gloves, always extra masks, sanitizers, and wipes. Water fountains are in the building. Water, water fountains look different. They are now called refillable wa water stations. So while they have the older kind of water fountain where you push the button and lean over and drink, those are shut off because that, that would not be safe right now. It's too close contact. But we do have at the top of these water stations um, where you can push your water bottle and it looks like what would be on a refrigerator door or in a restaurant where you push the water and the water just comes down to refill the water bottle. Those are operational. So that's why we encourage you if, if your child has a water bottle they like or you wanna get them one, we will have them here if they're needed, um, but they will be able to have water in the classrooms and use the refillable water stations. Classrooms also have those, each classroom has a sink with a working water fountain. 
we've shut the water fountains on so the kids can't push the button and lean over and drink, but the sinks do work to wash hands. At the end of the day, all desks.com, so including the one I'm standing in front of, they will be completely cleared off. Building service comes with a sanitizing, I'm gonna say like water gun, it looks like. It looks like a handheld squirter and it will shoot a mist of sanitizing liquid over every single um, desktop, countertop area in every classroom and on the teacher desk as well. Doorknobs, handrails, those kind of touch points, the high um, traffic touch points, they will be wiped multiple times throughout the day. Next one. Um, students are gonna be assigned bathrooms and we're only, we're really monitoring this. This is something else that we've developed. So we've assigned grade one and grade two, um, we'll use, so this, that's not really a good model because our second, first grade's on the first floor, second to fifth grade is on the second floor. So grade two and three, might use this bathroom. And then there is a document that um, teachers all have shared. And every time a student leave the classroom to go to the bathroom, that marks one spot taken so that we do not have overcrowding um, in, in a bathroom at any one time. But children will be able to use the hallway bathrooms. Our kindergartens have bathrooms in the classroom. If a child gets ill, um, and for whatever reason the child gets ill. The teacher will call down to our health room office and the nurse or the health tech, you, if you might know Ms. Bernard, she's back, and Ms. Grocky, she's back. Um, they will go to the classroom and they will escort your child down to the health room. Here's a picture, our health suite is rather large um, and you see Ms. Cornelia, she's here in the health room already waiting to greet anybody that needs to come down. Um, but there is a health room here. And then across from this health room are like triage areas that are separated with individual beds. Um, at that point, um, any care that's needed will be given and we will follow, you know, a, whatever guidelines that the county has established or the Department of Health and Human Services has established. Next slide. Okay, just miscellaneous things. Um, what we're doing currently is um, teachers will have masks on at all times. Um, Mr. Bauman and I are six feet apart. We're both vaccinated. So under the guidelines, we can be together um, tonight, six feet apart without our masks to do this presentation. But while children are in, we are completely masked throughout the day as our teaching staff is. So we will, teachers will get a button with their full smiling face on it so students can see, even though my teacher is wearing a mask, this is what my teacher looks like. Um, and so that hopefully that will provide some comfort. And then um, families also will have the opportunity each day to be to sent home, grab and go dinner and snacks through the county. And that would just go home with your child if, if you want access to that. Patrols right now, um, just my final note, patrols, we are not in operation. We can't send them outside. We can't put them in the hallways with mass gatherings of students walking through. We miss our patrols. We're looking forward to getting them up and running as soon as we can. Um, but at this time, the guidance from the county is patrols are on hold because of the safety. So at this time, we, we've taken a lot of your time. We thank you for being here. Um, we do have some of our wonderful staff members here. If there are any questions that we can answer, um, you just take yourself on mute. We do have Ms. Furman here. She's able to translate in Spanish if, if we have a parent that would like that. Yeah, I have some questions in the chat. Um, this is Keith. The, uh, I, did, I did like uh, Matthew Bowerman's suggestion of black lights and lava lamps in every classroom, but we can get to that later. <laughs> Jacket. Oh. That's what the PTA is there for. We can fund that. I was. I had two questions of myself. Of uh, one of one of my kids sees Madam Riley at eight forty. Is that still eight forty, or is it nine o'clock? Just for eight. Uh, that uh, eight forty. It's still eight forty. And it, then it resumes 
resumes next week. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, will all the staff be vaccinated? So it's interesting. Thank you for asking that. It's not mandated that staff are vaccinated. I will tell you, many of our staff have been vaccinated. Um, I can turn this around. Mm -hmm. right. Matthew's comfortable. I'm sharing. He's been vaccinated. I've been fully vaccinated. Um, many of our staff members have and are waiting, have gotten first and are waiting for the second. Um, and, and some have not, um, for whatever reason, they're choosing not to, but it's not mandated for staff to have a vaccination to report back to work. And some other questions from other parents. Um, how will kids in advanced math be able to participate in both classroom while in person, bo both classrooms while in person? I don't know the context, but maybe you do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And we have that um, for other classrooms too, students that are in, in support groups for reading or for math or receive speech services virtually, whatever the related services. Um, so I will say, this is gonna be my one line. We were talking about our quote today. And I, what I wanna share with you is, is how we start Monday the 15th is not how we're gonna end on June 15th. We are going to every single day reflect on our practices, what worked, what didn't, just as we've done through virtual learning. So our goal right now for, for classrooms like compacted math and some of our intervention groups and times with students, instrumental music is really looking at um, in the classroom having partition dividers. So students would have their headphones and their screen in front of them and sort of be closed off to the other learning in the classroom. Now that's not to say that at some point we're gonna feel it's safe enough we can make a change and Ms. Sherrard can pull a group. But to start, we're gonna start off slow and see how it goes. Um, so to start, Ms. Sherrard will be in the building, but she will be teaching virtually. Um, and students that participate in that class will likely have a, a trifold in front of them with headphones. Another question, uh, one, of, one of the classes uh, might say the name wrong, uh, Madam Owonas has 17 kids. Will that be, is that too much to be socially distanced in one classroom? So in some cases, it might not be what you have yet. Madam Riley, you were gonna say something? Did you so fourth and fifth grade has an A and B week, right? Correct. So there are only I, seven requests. There are only, and there, there are 17 requesting to be in person. So those 17 will be divided into an A week to come in virtually, while the rest stay, I'm sorry, um, will be requested to be in person. And then week B, will be the other half. Does that make sense? Right. So that's so fourth how and fifth we're handling grade groups because are divided we notice that two. children right. in fourth and fifth grade are coming back, right? I will tell you the higher number in kindergarten. And may I address the reading grade. initiative because. Go ahead, Michelle Ann. Oh, sorry. I was going to uh, also address Madam Bradley, who does reading initiative. Um, we have talked as a staff about that because they both have in first grade and second grade reading for 90 minutes. And we are positioning the children in a particular way so that there is a, an ability for Mrs. Bradley to see the children in, a, um, in an area um, within the classroom, please understand that, because as you know, there's half of Madame, Madame Cunet's and half of Mr. Mendy's class going to Mrs. Bradley for a reading initiative, and those children will be in, in a certain area in order to make sure that they can follow Madame Bradley's reading class. Does that make sense? So we have thought about this, please understand it. And Mrs. Print is absolutely right we're gonna start our practices and get better and better at it. And uh, someone was asking about the document cameras. Uh, what are they used for? 
The document cameras are Madam Riley or Mad Madam Polster, they use them daily. Um, so, but I, I'm going to give a start, and if you could, both of you wouldn't mind adding in and joining in. Um, Madam Polster uses them, Madam Riley, all teachers are using them. Um, it adds another camera lens to be able to show work quickly with students, show what the teachers to model with, and also now we're using document cameras to see each other learning at home or in the class. Is there anything you want to add either, Madam Polster or Madam Riley? Um, we have been actively, hi everybody, bonsoir. We have been actively working with those document cameras today. Some of us are more gifted than others in the technology department. Um, and this is our focus this today and, and tomorrow and probably first then Friday. We are gonna try every single configuration to make sure it's working, to make sure we're capturing the kids in the classroom so that their classmates can see them when they're at home. It's gonna work, it's already working. Uh, we are gonna make good use of those document cameras, trust me on this one. Uh, and another, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and the only thing I could add is the fact that um, all, the, all staff, uh, both, both programs are emphasizing, you can, you can just imagine Ms. Grunmeyer. I mean, first grade, she has got this covered. She's got her kids coming in and she's got her virtual kids and she's got that document camera flashing the whole class. And um, so all of us as teachers are focusing on using the document camera to create an environment in which the children are united and learning together. And they're and able to interact says, with each other. Yeah. When we were strictly virtual, we were using the document camera. Yes. She's frozen. The <laughs> document cameras during virtual is used that teachers could model. They could easily show a piece of paper, a model or work out a math problem and show it and kids would see it on the screen. Now we're modifying how we're using those document cameras so that we can make sure children learning at home or children learning in person still have that classroom feel and can still interact with each other. So we've just modified how they're using and we're playing with it. It's gonna get better and better. Um, but, but that's how it's used. Is, it, is there another question? There's a few more. Um, regarding lunch, will the parents know ahead of time what the lunch will be so they can decide whether to pack a lunch or not? So the lunch menus are gonna be provided weekly, I'm told. Um, and so those will be online. I can also put those in the, for the first few weeks in the Connect Ed, so you can click on the link and see it. Um, but yes, you would be told ahead of time. I think they're doing it one week ahead. It's not like the month calendars that we used to have. I think they're doing it week by week because a lot of it um, depends on the food that comes in because of um, the trucking and the delivery of food is changed. So it, the month calendars are not being used right now, but it's week by week. Um, and how, uh, one question was, how will, they, how will people know whether their kids are bus riders or not? So if you believe your child is a bus rider, the routes are already listed and posted on the MCPS transportation website. We have uploaded it to our Maryvale website. I can tell you exactly where to go to look at it. If you pull up our Maryvale uh, website through the county, our school comes up. To the left, it'll say school information. It has our school name and our school address. It's on the left side, right underneath of that, it'll say, um, magnet programs, which is a choice program or a lottery program, that would be the French immersion buses. And under that, there's bus routes also for our local community um, students. So if you're curious, if your child rides a bus, look at the bus list. If you're not able to determine still, please give us a call. We'll help you figure it out. And uh, someone had a good question. How are you, will you handle uh, charging the laptops throughout the day? Is there power at all the desks or? So teachers were, um, the county purchased surge protectors and extra chargers for teachers and we'll have extra carts for them to charge their Chromebooks. Yeah. Will special teachers be in person? In, in person? You know, we're gonna, this is gonna be another area that might change as we start. Initially to start, specials will be virtual. 
right? Because we just need to get the children in and get the feel and the safety of the building. Once we feel that we have that going and, and it's safe to do so, we may start um, doing some specials where the specialist teacher comes into the classroom or the students can go down into the art room, music room, or PE room. But we're trying not to do a lot of cross uh, or overlapping of children in and out. Um, so we'll try that at a limited basis. However, to start, we are doing all virtual specials. Um, if a child has a non uh, MCPS Chromebook, can they bring that or does it have to be the MCPS Chromebook? So if they don't have an MCPS Chromebook at home to bring to school, we will have them here. We will have the extra carts of Chromebooks for students that forget it um, or for when it's not working or for those that don't have that device at home, we will have them here. So but we will have a store of the extra ones. But so they can't use I would suggest not to bring personal computers to school because we can't guarantee it's gonna come home in the same condition. Um, so we would prefer the MCPS one to come back and forth. And if they don't have an MCPS device at home, that's okay, we'll ha we have them here. Those devices also don't have the same security and firewalling that is installed like for the MCPS Chromebooks. And so we can't guarantee what are all those devices coming into our building. And is Wednesday still a short day or no? So Wednesday is still that, that student support afternoon. So um, the Wednesday schedule, the only difference to how you know the Wednesday schedules, it's starting 25 minutes earlier, I mean later and ending 25 minutes later. The rest of that day will still look the same. And um, do you have to opt in for the school lunch in advance? No, you do not need to opt in. You can decide that day. Same thing with breakfast. Um, you, we have it here ready to go if, if the students want it. Same thing with dinners and snacks to be sent home. And have the fourth and fifth grade been assigned A and B? Is that been broken up so, yet? So that's one of the tasks for teachers this week during this kind of, I don't know what to call it, pre-service or setup week. Mm -hmm. um, so teachers are looking and trying to create cohorts that are the A or the B group. That's why I'm saying parents will, will um, get this information by next week. And um, if there's only 22 kids allowed on a bus, does that mean that there'll be more than one bus per route or not expecting that? Or? So that would be a question by the Department of Transportation. They set up all the routes. They know how many were coming at, um, according to the survey that parents put the preference on. So they use that survey to make sure the bus routing would work. They've not really changed any routes. The routes are the same. Um, they are only going, to, they are gonna limit the number of students on buses. So um, I would, guess that they're either expecting under that number to get on the bus or they're going to do a double trip or they're sending two buses. And then also for transportation, uh, one parent asks if they're, if they live in the neighborhood, can they walk sometimes and sometimes do a car pickup? Like if it's raining, you know, can they do car and walk and they switch whenever they want or so Walker, you always have the option to be a car rider, right? right? We always say we like it to can be consistent so your children know the consistency, but certainly if, it, if they're a walker and it rains and you wanna come pick them up in the car, you're welcome to do so for sure. It's good to let us know, email your teacher and copy the office, either um, Ms. Marta Furman, um, she's, she's stellar with dismissal and arrival and works very well at the last minute. We'd like to have that information early um, so we can make sure we get the message to the teacher and to your child. So let's say if they're walkers and at three o'clock it starts raining. You're gonna email the, you'll email the teacher and Ms. Furman and say, please let my child know they should be a car rider today. We'll be there to pick them up. That information goes to Ms. Furman. Ms. Furman calls the teacher to make sure the teacher saw the email because if this teacher is teaching, she may not see the email. So always include Marta Furman on it or the office staff and the teacher. 
We have a question from uh, one of the parents. You can go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, I wanted to know. Uh, so, if uh, my child needs to bring like a um, like a like a lunch that needs to be heated, is there a microwave available? Yes, we do not heat lunches brought from home. No. Oh, okay. Sorry, I muted her. I don't know if she's still talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you have more, I can I can unmute you again. Keep, keep in mind that lunch that would be coming from home, whether it's there in that student's lunchbox at their desk in their box there here, or going outside with them to recess, it's going to be with them throughout that day. And so it needs to be sustainable in, in a way that, you know, isn't going to be uh, spoiled um, during the day. Uh, one other question about the AB stuff, uh, would they have the option of if there's uh, siblings in the same class to be in the same A or the same section? Yes, if I listen, it's already hard enough for you champion parents that are doing this every day. I, I, we are so grateful for your support. If that happens, if you hear my child, my one of my children's in A and one is in B, Email us and let us know. We are willing to work with you. We do not want to make things any harder than it's already been for you. So that is just an email to Mr. Bowerman or myself, um, and we will get that worked out. And what about uh, what about COVID testing or screening or any of that kind of stuff? Are you going to do any of that at the school? So families, as you know, have that weekly attestation. Um, form and and I understand that it may change because we change as the state and the state of Maryland changes. But right now, um, families have to fill out that weekly attestation form for their children. Um, and anybody that has yes on any of those questions are asked not to come to school. I think that's it. But if you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll save it out. And if we missed any, uh, you know, you can circle back around with them and connect it or something. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so obviously a lot of information and some great questions. I just want to extend a huge thank you to Principal Prin, uh, Assistant Principal Bowerman, Madam Riley. I know there's some uh, teachers and staff that have joined us this evening as well. Thank you so much for your time. There's obviously a ton of work that's gone into this so far and uh, that continues to go into this. And I think one thing that really struck me is the sort of emphasis on a growth mindset for how you're going to continue to learn in the weeks to come. I think that's something we really try to emphasize with our kids. And I think that's really uh, admirable to see how well all of you are adapting on the fly and taking new information on the fly. So thank you so much for all your, your hard work. Um, as I said, if, if there's, we're going to record this and make this available. So if you know anyone that would have benefited from this information, couldn't be here this evening, we'll be sharing that. Um, and please feel free to follow up if you have additional questions. Um, I do want to highlight that you know this is normally our, our board meeting for the PTA. We meet monthly on the second Tuesday of the month. One of the, I think the real highlights of that meeting is that the um, uh, Principal Bauer, Principal Prin and Assistant Principal Bowerman join us for an update. They cover all sorts of topics of curriculum, things around the school, et cetera. That's open to the PTA uh, membership and to the school community. So if you're interested in this kind of information, please you know, feel free to join us um, next month as well. I think there's obviously going to be more things coming up, both in how we're handling this process, as well as as we get more, um, you know, more uh, back to school and a physical presence. So we'd love to have more attendance at those meetings. I think we've pivoted to a virtual mode for these and it's actually worked really well. So it's not like you have to drive across town to be at the meeting. It's just the same virtual environment where, you know, we just um, get an update from all the, from the school leadership as well as from um, the, the board members themselves. So we thank you all for being here. Everyone is welcome to stay on. If you have to go, we understand, but we normally do use this to kind of do our internal uh, uh, PTA board business. So I wanted to make sure we have time for that if, if the board has time. But I just want to highlight two things. One is if you, and you look in the chat, feel free to, there's a link to the PTA web, website where you can join the PTA. There's a email list if you'd like to stay up to date on um, you know, events like this or other activities of the PTA, please uh, feel free to click those links for more information or follow up with me at president at Maryville PTA 
um, dot org. And just to say that we will be looking for our leadership for the PTA for next year, starting with a nominating committee that we'll be setting up next month. So that's for the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer for the PTA. But there's lots of different ways you can get involved and participate just by attending the board meetings as a, as a guest, you're welcome to be there. Or if there's other ways you want to help out or, or pitch in or look for someone to work with, we'd love to have your engagement and get your perspective. The goal is to have as many different voices um, in the discussion and points of view as possible. So we want to hear from you and it's really a great community to be a part of. So thank you all for joining us. And with that, I want to um, move to the rest of our, our board agenda. Um, I think, thank you all, Amanda Pio. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, and next up will be our, our, our secretary, uh, Amanda Roberts with the uh, approval of the minutes from last uh, month's uh, PTA board meeting. Don't yeah. Hi. Um, so, what? You, whatever you're doing. I was looking in the chat. You don't need to. Kate, can you show the the document that I had sent? It's one one. good. I don't know yeah. why this card okay. is. So work. basically, at this point, I'm just asking for someone to move to um, accept the minutes from our last meeting, which was the previous long meeting when. Um, uh, Ms. Printer, Mr. Bowerman went over, you know, kind of the first set of Is that right? Somebody is to second it as well. Let me see if I can pull them up. Give me one second. Sorry, I'm on two computers and the one on Zoom is not the one attached to my account. Yep, I hear ya. A moment. Minutes, Mary Vale. All right, well, maybe any members of the board, it's in the um, folder, it always is if somebody is. I've got it right here. All right, perfect. So we just need somebody to motion and then second to approve the minutes. Perfect, thank you. And I can't do that, someone else can. I move to approve the minutes. Thank you. I second. I second. All right, all those in favor of, uh, of approving the minutes? Uh, Hi. I guess better ask anybody opposed. All right, we'll take that as approval. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Amanda. Um, next up on our agenda is a uh, treasurer's update from Acacia Jackson Vance. Hi. Um, I'm going to try to be brief because we've already gone so late tonight. Um, so this is this is shared with, with the board and you guys can come and look at it for specific numbers of bank balances. Um, but there are just some, some things to note from this month. Um, we have three new orders for Spirit Gear on the member hub. So I don't know. Um, who's monitoring that, but that came through with me when I went through new memberships and spirit gear orders in settling up that for the month. Um, so far I have paid for 50 members to the county and all 61 members to the state. Um, we've had some discussion back and forth with the county um, about when and how to pay our state dues and our national dues. And the advice was to go ahead and do that. So that has been accomplished, but we had more at the time that I paid that than when we had paid the county. So I still have some to catch up with the county and I'll do that this month. Um, we have now paid 2,100 in the book reimbursements to the library. Um, and all of our forms with the IRS have been filed, uh, the 1099 NEC and 1096. And last week I went to a mandatory training with the state of Maryland virtually. Um, and there were a couple things that stood out in that. And one was that we cannot have more, no, we have to have three non fundraising events for every item that is listed as fundraising in our budget. Normally that's not an issue because we have a lot of restaurant nights and things like the movie nights. Uh, this year, I think that we may not be in compliance with that. So they gave some suggestions 
um, that like spirit gear is shouldn't be considered fundraising. And I think it is listed as fundraising right now in the budget. So I'm going to go through in this next month and see what can be considered a community builder or a program instead of a fundraising. And if I do that, I'm going to have to come back to the general membership for a vote to move those categories around because it inevitably moves money out of certain categories. So that's a that's a goal for me in this next month to get that all lined up and then we should be safe moving forward with that. We sh won't have trouble anymore, but um, we have things like restaurant nights are considered a fundraiser and he said those really aren't, those are community building things. So I need to, I know because it builds community, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure um, why, but he was the one who said, these are the categories and you have to be careful about what's a fundraiser and what's not. And you can consider these other things programs. And and so that's fine with me. I just need to go through and come up with that. Um, and one other note, I know we've had, you know, our budget, we brought in probably 45% of what we were hoping to bring or what we had budgeted to bring in. So at this point, we've got enough money to cover what we've got promised out, which is, you know, some staff appreciation things and teacher grants. And then we have like insurance and stuff that we pay at the end of the year to cover us for the next year movie license fees. So we have enough money for those things. But if we want to do any more things, and there may be ideas as we're going back to school, we're going to need to do some fundraising for that. Um, so I will send out kind of a breakdown of those numbers for the board to just take a peek at, oh, there's this much in the bank account and this much more goes to library books and this much is insurance. And just to see where that leaves us going into the next year so that um, we can all kind of have a say in, in how that has broken down. I mean, it's, it's predestined in our budget, but we also budgeted for us to bring in more than we, than we did. So um, we should be fine, but I want us to just kind of move forward knowing what's there and that if we want to supply things coming up that we'll have to direct ask or fundraise or do something to to fund those so um and coming up i also have another quarterly tax filing with the comptroller and that's it thank you for that i would say for for maybe some newcomers just to highlight one thing we've really focused on is transparency. So Acacia does a really great job of managing our books, but that's something that we really try to make as accessible as possible for everyone to understand kind of where, what money we have. I think to her point, we actually, I think have a lot of fundraising ability that um, Sandra has done a great job of to raise more money for new events. Our hope is that as we kind of ramp up an activity, we've got a lot, we've, we've done some Facebook direct ask, for instance, where we don't even pay a surcharge to Facebook. We just get 100% of the money we raise to pay for events. And so with 600 plus families in the school, we actually have a pretty, um, a pretty powerful fundraising mechanism there. We just need to have those events to raise money for. So with that sort of a segue to Teresa Clark, our program and events chair. Right, the events that we need your ideas to help plan. So I think you've heard the message multiple times. Um, we want to help uh, build our events and our programs for the community, both online and you know in person, once that's a possibility. Uh, there was some talk about how we can do teacher appreciation, staff appreciation. We really want to support that as a PTA and we have the funds that we might be able to do those sorts of things. Um, so we're always looking for new ideas and for the volunteers to go along with those ideas. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me at programs at marybellpta.org if you have some ideas or want to collaborate on something. The one thing that we do have backburnered but still in the works is the career day activity that I've talked about a couple of times. Um, I'll be reaching out to Amanda and Ms. Ritt who are helping with that and kicking that back off. And that might be something we have on a Wednesday in probably May uh, to give us some time to plan it and get people jazzed up about it again. So that's one thing that we have in mind, but we'd love to do other stuff. I know after the last meeting, some people reached out about like, how can we do a garden? Can we do some other things? Those are all great ideas. And as things become more and more open, um, we'll be able to implement those. So, so anyone who wants, just wants to reach out, feel free. Great, thank you, Teresa. And I, I actually will highlight also, people are welcome to come back to next month's board meeting and get on the agenda and the other business section and just raise, if you have ideas or want to float something or get some feedback, that's a great way to socialize an idea and, and get it, get some attention. And we do have school leadership there, so you can get some quick feedback on that idea. 
So with that, um, Natalie Hull Simpson, our membership chair. Hello. Um, so after uh, the last um, meeting, we got some memberships. We got seven new parent memberships and one new family membership. Um, Acacia, I still need to go through at the spreadsheets. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, we also had a bunch of people sign up uh, to join Member Hub. So that's great. And I'll be sending out an email to everybody either this week or um, next week just to tell people how to join um, the individual classroom hubs, which some people have already done too, I noticed today. Um, and that's all I have. That's great. Thank you. I think one other thing that Teresa and I were talking about too is maybe there's a subgroup of us. I think Ashwin maybe would be part of it as well, thinking about what is like default settings in member hub, or maybe there's ways that we can structure the notifications, et cetera, to, you know, some groups it makes sense to go out broadly and other groups we want to kind of structure it to default to a different settings. So I think that's something we can follow up with um, offline, but that's great. I think getting traction on that. It's another one that hopefully that'll carry forward even as we go back to more in-person interaction. Um, so with that, Ashwin Dharmadakari is our communications chair. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I don't have any um, significant updates um, in terms of the communications piece. Um, for those of you that are on the call that um, are not yet on the listserv for the um, weekly Maryvale PTA newsletter that comes out every Sunday evening, um, that's another um, avenue of communication from the PTA and the board out to the, the uh, Maryvale community. So can sign up for that. But, um, there's also, um, as you're hearing in today's call, um, many other outlets like Member Hub in particular, which I think will be a great way for the community to communicate. So um, I'm happy to take questions, but I don't really have any other updates. Great, thank you, Ashwin. And thanks for all your work uh, with the weekly newsletter, much appreciated. Um, next up, Brian Price is our uh, county PTA rep for Maryvale. Brian? Hi, good evening. Um, I don't have much to report. Um, we are going to be um, voting soon, and uh, we need to update um, the people that are on our PTA board with the, um, the county board, so they don't have our information. So they're, they're, they have a, a blue book that we're supposed to sign up in. Uh, I'll send that information out to you. I'm not sure if you guys are on a delegate emails also, um, but I'll get the information to you. So that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Brandon. One thing I would highlight for this group as well is, you know, in our advocacy role, we have the ability to send sort of issues up through Brian's role as a delegate to the county to highlight if there's sp specific issues or opportunities related to Maryvale that you want highlighted at a higher level. That's a great conduit to get your voice heard. So feel free to follow up with Brian directly or with, with me. Um, and then uh, Sandra Taylor is our fundraising chair. Sandra? Hey, um, Acacia, can we talk about, um, just shoot me an email and we can talk about some of the things you just brought up um, later. Um, as far as other fundraising, um, so I just became aware that Silver Diner, um, anytime you eat at Silver Diner, you can, um, if you linked Maryville to the restaurant, it um, they'll automatically, it, it's just all year round. Um, so I, I think I need to maybe type something up with Ashwin to put that on uh, one of the newsletter so people know about that. Um, I have a fundraiser set with Emma Rossi Pizzeria uh, for the second week in April. Um, and I, I guess I'm in charge of spirit gear, but I have no clue how to access that or do, do anything with that. So Stephen, I will get, uh, I'll shoot you a message and figure out how to do that. Um, and then we've, I know Acacia mentioned possibly having another book fair. I wanted to kind of see is, if everyone was interested in that um, and having maybe one in May. I don't know, what, what are your guys' thoughts on that? So one thing I have to say about that is that in the um, in the treasurer's training, they were talking about being careful not to repeat a fundraiser. 
because it could look like um, giving preference to a certain company and somehow somebody benefiting from not diversifying our fundraisers. So I don't know if it could be with just a different company and yeah. that would be okay. But there were some guidelines that they talked about there about not doing okay. the same thing twice or maybe that's with the same company when it comes to like a book fair. Um, although I did, we ended up getting quite a bit of money. Yeah. From the last one for what we sold, I thought we did a really got the percentage. The nice thing about this company is they, they provide 30%. So no other yeah. company does that. Well, I can um, look into that again, but that was something that they, that they just talked about. They brought that type of thing up. So something to think about, but I, I, before I, went to that meeting I was like let's do another book fair. so one thing yeah so one thing I would suggest is I I think we, we often don't have enough time in these meetings even to really dig into the budget at that level and I think one thing that might be helpful is to do a separate I think the three of us can be in the meeting and we could welcome others into that meeting as well but for instance the control points for what the where the fundraising category is one way is just to move that higher up so that there's more stuff underneath it and i think the same thing about the basically what we need to do is understand the regulations that are coming from the treasurer's perspective which we need to you know stay true to but i think this idea of like hey if we're doing it because it actually is a really good fundraiser for the for the pta and we as a board and as a community decide that makes sense i think we can just we just need to do that with our eyes open and be aware of what the regulation is but i think that's something that we would just want to kind of really look at to make sure that it it's not just like one person in the board that's like hey we got to go to this company because my brother works there or something it's because we're getting 30 percent of the i mean for the for the sort of newcomers this meeting the book fair tends to be a very good fundraiser for the school and sandra found a company that was giving us a 30 30 percent of the revenue came to the pta so actually was very successful and personally I understand the, the spirit of trying to do that again, I think could make a lot of sense, but that's, I think it would be really great to have another conversation about that. And again, I think it's healthy for anyone who's involved with the PTA or the school community to see what the numbers look like overall for the budget. Cause we actually have a lot of funding available and the opportunity to raise more funding. We just need to do that in a way that's appropriate and, and consistent with the regulation. So let's, we can follow up that with that separately, but if anyone's interested in helping with the spirit wear or in, engaging with any of this kind of discussion, we'd love to have, um, you know, the more input and eyes on the numbers, I think the better off we all are. So thank you for that. Sandra, do you have anything else you want to share with the group? Uh, no, I think, I, I mean, Acacia, I, I'll, I'm definitely going to be thinking about some more fundraisers that, um, yeah, to help with that since restaurants awesome. apparently don't work. Well, and I think this idea of like the, the both, both the programs and activities ramping up as we get back to like more in-person activities and the fundraising going with that. I think that that they go hand in hand. So that all sounds really great. And it just, we appreciate all your work on that front. Um, I know Benga is on the call, our vice president. You're not on the agenda as a particular topic. Benga, is there anything you want to share with the group while you're on? Or not. And Amanda, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Uh, no, just I think another plug, um, I know a number of people have dropped off, but I guess at this point I'm as much talking to the current board members. Um, I'm heading up our nominating committee this year, and we need to find people to be uh, um, on the executive committee, so president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Um, so um, I've, call, I've reached out to Sandra and Teresa already to help me with this task. As an update, I, I never got a, somebody from the school, so I think we just have to, we'll get moving anyway. Um, and so this is really just, if any of you are interested in stepping up to one of those four roles, and if you know anybody who might be interested, if there's new parents who happen to still be listening and you want to um, uh, step in, it's actually in April that we will be make, recommending the slate, which is shockingly close. That always seems so far away. Um, so I'm just plugging, begging, pleading. Uh, think about if you would be willing to uh, step in as president, vice president, secretary, or treasurer. And because I don't think a lot of people know this, um, the term term limits isn't necessarily correct, but um, Acacia, Stephen, and Benga cannot serve for a third consecutive year in the same position. So we need we need people. So that's I'll I'll end there. Uh, reach out to me if you're interested. If you know anybody who's interested, love to get a lot of diversity across the school. Um, and well, we'll get moving on that. And then Sandra and Teresa, I'll reach out to you. We'll just set up a call and get going anyway. 
Thank you for um, highlighting that. I will just add in addition, just being a board member, which just means logging in once a month to these meetings, just gives you a voice to vote on issues that come before the board. And it's a great way to maybe get some exposure and, and contribute some ideas and give some feedback at a level down from being sort of in that executive committee. So if there's, if, if you're interested in that level, there's plenty of ways we can slot people in in those roles. And we've had a number of newcomers this year, kind of people involved that took on a board role that have really, I think, strengthened the organization as a whole. So we'd love to add a few people. And again, all it means is at a minimum logging in once a month and, and speaking up down again. So um, with that, any other business that people want to bring um, for the good of the order? All right, well, our next board meeting is uh, the second Tuesday in April, which is April 23rd. I'm sure we'll have learned a lot about the return to school by then and have even more questions. So feel free to join us then. Um, and in the meantime, reach out at president at maryvillepta.org or to any of my colleagues if you have any questions or suggestions. Um, anyone, anything else anyone wants to share before we adjourn? Um, this is Ashwin. I just had a quick question. I'm getting um, an email or two um, to the communications about where tonight's presentation, wh where and when it'll be shared. Keith, do you have um, any information I can forward yeah, about I, that? Uh, the last one, I just put it on the Maryville website and I, I uploaded it to the Maryville YouTube account. So it'll so be Maryville. on MaryvillePTA.org. It may okay. not be tonight. Uh, it takes a while. Sure. Videos no are problem. Long. I'll let I'll let the folks know <laughs> that website. Thank hours. you. And thank you very much, Keith, for all your help with uh, the IT side and with the uploading the video and facilitating the discussion. I, I much appreciate it. So thank you so much. Um, so with that, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Good luck with uh, the return to school. And we'll, we'll see you in a few weeks.